So this turned out to be really fun. Uh, this guy called Justin, Justin Pinkney, came up with this way to turn just like ordinary everyday objects like these into Pokemon. And I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really easy. It's just like a collab notebook. You don't need anything installed locally. It's lots of fun. It's good. So that's what we're going to be doing. So here's the notebook. It's linked in the description. Um, you can read all the stuff. Don't need to read any of the stuff. Just run all the cells. Just run them all. No need to think about it. Just go bim bam boom run until you get to this part here. This is actually a variant. This notebook I've made, it's like a variant of the original notebook that Justin posted. I'll post the original notebook as well, but if you want to follow along, just go to the one that I linked. Okay, looks like we're done, and that took like a minute and a half. So there are two things we can do in this notebook. The first is text to image, and the next is image to image. So we'll just start with the text to image one. Okay, so just run the first cell. All this does is it goes and finds the weights that Justin created, which is sitting up on Hugging Face, and it pulls them down onto the instance that the collab is running on, and it loads them into Stable Diffusion so that you can use it on the instance. Um, this is really good because it means that you're not like online trying to ping some endpoint that like hundreds of thousands of other people are trying to make, uh, trying to ping. So, yeah, that's why we do this. Hat mode, activate. Nice. Hmm. Okay, so that took like 10 minutes to run, um, and now we're actually ready to make some Pokemon. So I've made this cell here, and it's got some inputs. So prompts is like the prompts that you're interested in. Scale is guidance scale, which the higher the guidance scale is, the more freedom the machine learning model will have to try to make the image look like what you want. But on the on the sort of the downside, the higher the chance is that there'll be like weird artifacts that look like nothing at all. So that's kind of, guidance scale is kind of like high risk, high reward, kind of. Um, steps, that's the number of times the machine learning model makes a pass. More steps, you risk like sort of overcooking it. Less steps, it'll just look like jumbled nonsense. Uh, samples per prompt. In this case, let's try like four different samples per prompt. And we'll do a concurrency of four. This means like how many samples will be generated at once. If you put this any higher than four, then the, th the thing will probably crash. And it'll be like, no, 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 that was too much. So keep, keep that at four. And then you just run it. And this also takes a little while, so just like bear with it. But at the end of this, we should get eight images, four of John Cena as a Pokemon, and four of a banana as a Pokemon. So, yeah. Okay, so that took like two minutes. Uh, and then we just ran this final cell to visualize it. And here are our results. So this is the banana one. And as you can see, like, none of these look anything like a banana, except maybe that this has, like, borrowed some aspects of, of a banana. Um, and perhaps the colour scheme, you know, perhaps that's all that's there. And then we've got John Cena up here, these are the first four. And while none of these look like John Cena the person, they do definitely borrow some of John Cena's attributes, such as being a big chonky boy who's ready for a fight. You can kind of see where it's, where it's getting at a little bit. Um, but the facial features are not coming through so much. I found that to get good results with this, what you have to do is firstly pick like a huge number of samples, like 20 samples per prompt, and maybe of those 20, one will look reasonable. And then also picking obviously more recognizable people is always helpful as well. But okay, that's how you run this um, text to image version. Now let's do the image to image. First, we just run this helpful function for us to use later. And now we initialize the image to image uh, stable diffusion model. Now this won't have to download anything because we already downloaded everything up here. Instead it'll just use the stuff that was downloaded to build a new image to image version. Just a few technical things. This dot to CUDA that puts the model on your GPU because that allows it to run really fast if it's on your GPU. And again this safety check and null safety that makes sure that the model won't censor any NSFW content because you know what we're all here to do obviously is create some very spicy Pokemon images for us to, to use later. Okay, great, that ran pretty quick. So now this final cell. Um, there's a little bit here, so bear with me. What we have in the end is instead of prompts, we have images. And each of these images is a tuple, which has a prompt on the one side and an image grabbed from Google on the other side. Uh, and we use this helpful get image function to do that. And basically what it does is it'll, it'll go to the URL, find the image, resize it to this size, and then return it. Um, so if you want to make one of these your own, you just copy this and then find a new URL somewhere and then paste the URL in there and then that's your new prompt. There are a lot of examples here if you want to have a look at them. Um, and yeah, so if we just follow this image, for instance, um, it's this one. This is the image of Jeff Bezos that I've been using. Okay, and then so for each of these images, it'll uh, you put in the number of samples per image. So in this case, I want two samples. And for each one, it'll go through and it'll create a new image from the base image and the prompt together. Um, just one or two important parameters here. We have strength. 
it's the opposite of what you think it would be. So higher strength means that the model is going to ignore the image more and do whatever the hell it wants. If the strength is really low, the model will be forced to stick really close to the image you've given it. All the other parameters are exactly the same as we had before. Um, yeah, so as you can see, like these are some results I got before. They're pretty good, I'd say. Um, so you know what, let's just do four and uh, we'll try that again. One more thing to be ca cautious of here is that you can only generate one sample at a time with this image to image stuff. Um, there's probably a way of making it multiple samples at a time, but I don't want to read the documentation. So it's going to be one sample at a time. So it'll be like n times as slow as this one up here, where n is the concurrency. So you expect it to be like four times as slow. Okay, and yeah, these are actually all pretty good as well. Um, you know, you could look at these and say these are actually a fair bit better than the ones that were just generated with the prompt. The image really helped. Um, but in this case, I think it has to do, one, with Jeff Bezos being like a super recognizable dude. And two, this particular image I think is quite good because it gives the model like this head and these hands to sort of work with. And when you look here, the hands and the head, you know, the, this, the sort of shape is quite similar. And quite often he'll be having his hands up like this. And so I think just because of the image we chose, it ended up being like easy for the model to work with and that's why we get these quite good results for Jeff Bezos but let's try again let's try a different example let's find some like worse images for Jeff Bezos okay so now we've got two different images to work with one is this sort of classic image of Jeff Bezos but also it's kind of close up and doesn't really have um, any other features other than his head so I'm suspecting the results gonna be like worse and then here we have like a caricature of Jeff Bezos um, I don't know how this is gonna go down but we'll definitely find out so yeah, we'll still keep the samples per image on four, and then, yeah, we'll just generate away. So we're expecting like eight images out of this, because it'll create four samples for each one. Oh, and by the way, like, the way to find these images, um, I'm just going to Google Images, selecting an image, and then you go to Open Image in New Tab. And when you have that, you then select this URL. Um, yeah, just in case, I don't know, maybe some people don't know how to do that. So, okay, easy peasy, looks like we're here. Um, so I'm just gonna make a new cell and then paste this code here again so that we can compare the two images. I don't want to lose the original ones. Okay, and here we go. So we've actually gotten some pretty good ones um, out of this. So based on that, I guess maybe my hypothesis was completely incorrect. Look at this one. Damn. Okay, so I guess the main reason that Jeff Bezos looks better than John Cena is just because he's really recognizable. Look at this one, man. <laughs> and he's got that bald head that's like a really prominent feature. Um, the way that I generated these ones here it took me like a long time, uh, by which I mean it took me a lot of samples. So I just, what I did is I just ramped these samples per image up to like 20, and then I left and I had lunch. And then I came back and then like three of them were good, which I then used. So that's what I would recommend doing. Um, and that's it. Again, big thanks to Justin for like actually making this so that people like me can come and like, you know, feast on the scraps of his efforts. So that's, that's really nice. Big props. Okay, so um, while you're going wild, while you're going crazy making all sorts of Pokemon, um, if you hear of anything cool that you want me to make a video on, just uh, reach out to me on Twitter, which I've included in the description. And be like, hey, hey Luca, bloody, I found this really cool art that turns everything into a piece. check it out. And I will check it out, because that sounds cool.